Let's continue in section 2.6 with transformation. A transformation of a function y equals a with the function of x minus h plus k. Here we've been dealing with the absolute value of x minus h, and that is a change made to the value of at least one of the parameters a, h, and k. So far we've been dealing with h and k. The parameters is a symbol, usually a letter, that represents a constant. In a function rule, a parameter helps describe a transformation of a function. We've already discussed the parameters that involved h and k. Recall h is our horizontal shift or transformation from left to right, and k represents our vertical transformation, which means up and down. In this section, we're going to take a look at the parameters that revolve around a. Here, we want to talk about a stretch and a shrink of the function. A vertical stretch of a function, f, by a factor of a, where a is greater than 1, is a transformation of f that multiplies all y values by a, therefore achieving the stretch. A shrink is a vertical shrink of a function f by a factor of a where a is between 0 and 1. In other words, it's going to be some sort of decimal or fraction and as a transformation of that function multiplies all y values by a. In other words, when I multiply a whole number by a fraction, it's going to shrink by that factor or amount. Here I have three examples to help us identify vertical stretch and shrink. Here we have the parent function, y equals the absolute value of x. We've graphed that many times, so we can do that really quick. 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, negative 1, 1, negative 2, 2. And this represents the graph of my parent function for the absolute value of x. If I go to the next example, I see that I have a 3 outside my absolute value. That is going to represent the parameter for a. In other words, this is going to be an increase of my y value by a factor of 3. So if I go to my parent function and I have a y value of 0, 0 times 3 is still 0, my y value here is 1, but I'm going to multiply that by 3, so that it increases my y value 3 times 1, which is 3. And 2, I'm going to multiply my y value by 2, which gives me 3, 4, 5, 6. So you can see just in the right side of my y-axis, it increased the y values by a multiple of 3. And again, it's going to do the same thing on the left. 1 times 3 is 3, and 2 times 3 is 6. And that is a vertical stretch of my parent function by a factor of 3. Let's see what happens when I have a parameter of a that is a fraction or a factor of a third. So what I'm going to do is multiply all y values by 1 third. 0, 0, again, is going to give us a graph or ordered pair of 0, 0. I multiply my 1 times a third, I get 1 and then a third, and then I multiply 2 times my third and get 2 and a third. That will be similar to the left side, or my negative x values, which would be 1 third for a negative 1, and 2 thirds for a negative 2. And if you notice, the y values on my parent function are usual that we've seen in the past. For the green function, which is a vertical stretch of 3, increases rapidly, while the blue function, which is my shrink of 1 third, is climbing or increasing very slowly. These represent a stretch and a shrink of my parent function. In this example, they want us to describe and graph the function. Here we're given y equals 2 absolute value of x. The a in my general function is represented by 2. Therefore, the y values in my graph are going to be multiplied by 2. Therefore, this is going to be a stretch by a factor of 2. To graph this, what I'm going to do is graph the parent function, which we've done several times. 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 0, 0, negative 1, 1, negative 2, 2.
And what I want to do now is to graph the vertical stretch by a factor of 2. That means that every y value is going to get multiplied by a value of 2. 0, 0 is going to remain 0, 0, but here the y value of 1 will go to 2, and the y value of 2 will go to 4. And that will be similar for the negative x values. And the blue graph is the vertical stretch of my parent function by a factor of 2. Reflection. A reflection or flip is a transformation that maps a point in the plane to its mirror image using a specific line as a mirror. Well, we're going to use the coordinate plane. The specific line we're going to use in this section is going to be the x-axis. We can find reflections about the y-axis and the origin, but in this section, we're going to use just the x-axis. If I would graph our parent function for y equals the absolute value of x, I would achieve a graph that looks pretty similar to this, and we've graphed this several times. I know the ordered pairs are 1, 1, 2, 2, negative 1, 1, and negative 2, 2. If I wanted the reflection about the x-axis, what I would do is take these ordered pairs, and I would use the same x value, so it would be 0, 0, and 1, 1, I would multiply the y value by a negative 1. And I would multiply this y value by a negative 1, getting a negative 2. I would multiply this y value, which is 1, by a negative 1 and get a negative 1. And this y value, which is 2, by a negative 1 and get a negative 2. So you can see what was achieved was a flip of my parent function by multiplying the top y values by a negative 1. Therefore, to achieve the reflection of my parent function, I would need to multiply the y values by a negative 1. Therefore, my a in the general function would be a negative 1. And that's how I would achieve the reflection of my parent function over the x-axis. So let's visually take a little better picture of this by graphing my parent function again. Here I have 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, negative 1, 1, negative 2, 2. And to achieve the reflection, I would just take the y values and multiply by that negative 1. 0 would still be 0. 1 times a negative 1 is a negative 1. 1 times a negative 1 is a negative 1, and 2 times a negative 1 is a negative 2. And then graphing those ordered pairs, I get 0, 0, 1, negative 1, 2, negative 2, negative 1, negative 1, and negative 2, negative 2. In this example, they want us to describe and then graph the function. Here, if we would take a look at the general function, y equals a absolute value of x minus h plus k. We recall that k is our vertical transformation, or the up and down motion. Our h here is going to be my left and right transformation. And in this situation, h happens to be a negative 2. I know that because if I substitute in, a negative times a negative would give us that positive value. Here, I'm given a, which would be our reflection, or in other words, if it was a positive value or negative value, it would be our vertical stretch or vertical str uh, shrink. And here, what it's going to do is just reflect about the x-axis. So I know if my general parent function for the absolute value of x is 0, 0, negative 1, 1, negative 2, 2, and 1, 1, 2, 2. I can then graph this new function by just using transformations. So after graphing my absolute value parent function, I can then graph this function, which tells me it needs to move to the left two units, 
So every ordered pair from my parent function will move to the left two units. So that will be one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. So this is my parent function. This is the function with the transformation. And then I'm going to show you the reflection by taking each one of these points and flipping it over or transforming it over the x-axis. And the green function is the function I wanted, which is y equals the negative absolute value of x plus 2. Again, in the example they want us to describe and then graph the function. Here, I know that I do not have a k value, so I don't have a vertical transformation. I have an h value that is going to be a positive 4. And I have a reflection over the x-axis. So if I just graph to my parent function, then I could graph my function without the reflection, which would be a shift to the right of each ordered pair. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. So that represents y equals the absolute value of x minus four. And now I need the reflection, which means one of these ordered pairs, each one, is going to be flipped over the x axis. So that would be a negative two. Negative 1, still 0, negative 1, and negative 2. And the green graph is the function we were looking for, which is y equals the negative absolute value of x minus 4. And each one of these graphs have been achieved on this slide and the previous slide without creating a table. And finally, we have the family of functions, the absolute value function being demonstrated. We have the vertical stretch or shrink and reflection in the x-axis. Here's our parent function. To have it flip over the x-axis, we multiply the exterior by a negative 1. It is a stretch if the a value is greater than 1. It is a shrink if the a value is between 0 and 1. And I have a reflection in the x-axis if a is negative. The combined transformation would be y equals a, absolute value of x minus h, plus k. In this example, they want us to write an equation for the translation so that the graph has the given vertex. Well, if we take a look at the parent function, which is 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, negative 1, 1, negative 2, 2. And what they want is this function, even though it's going to be a reflection, but they want it moved to the left three units. So what I would have to do is move each ordered pair three units to the left to represent this function. So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three and one, two, three. And we know this negative will reflect that over the x-axis. But what I need to do is to get this parent function to be shifted to the left three units. So that actually is, if I let this general function, y equals a x minus h plus k. And it, the way it looks is that this negative 3, 0 is actually, the vertex is actually h comma k. 
inside of this general function. So if I would just substitute in y equals, the negative is going to represent the reflection if I did graph that. So that would be a negative absolute value of x minus a negative 3. And no vertical transformation, so that would be 0. And then if I would sim simplify, that would give me y equals a negative absolute value of x plus 3. This gives me a reflection over the x-axis, a horizontal shift by 3 units, and no vertical shift. So if I used that general formula, knowing that this vertex is actually h comma k, all I would need to do is substitute in y equals a absolute value of x minus h plus k. I know that my a is known to be a positive 1 here, x minus h, which is 2, plus k, which is 5. Therefore, I know that I have a horizontal shift to the right and a vertical shift of 5 up. Last example, if I do the same thing, I have a hk for my vertex, which is going to be a negative 4, negative 3. My general form is a, absolute value of x minus h, plus k, substituting in y equals a is a positive 1, x minus h, so it's a negative 4 with the minus sign though, and a negative 3 for k. When I substitute in, I'm going to get the absolute value of x plus 4 minus 3.